I repaired a 8591A spectrum analyzer and it had a odd problem I'd seen documented, but I hadn't seen like an example of fixing it. Um, when it started up, it would run really, really slowly on update on the screen. Um, it would take 30 seconds per update as though the CPU was busy, but it looked like it was working. Sadly, I didn't get a video of this. The problem ended up being the card that got a, you connect memory cards to was bad. But um, it started out when I turned it on, it would actually do this and then reboot a lot. Um, and I ended up ripping apart the power supply and recapping the whole thing, which solved the reboots um, that fixed the power supply. All right, so this shows um, I'm turning on the unit and I'm doing a final check. The key voltage with this thing is you want 5.1 volts um, on the power supply uh, when it's running. So you can see I'm sort of adjusting this. <clears throat> it wants this to be very precise um, before I run the calibration. So you can see I'm adjusting to get it uh, really, really right on. Uh, the power supply was not well documented. It took me a while online to find uh, information and, and recapping it was a giant pain. It had tons of epoxy around all the, the electrolytics that had to be dealt with and I ended up also messing up some diodes that I ended up having to replace. So all right, see I want 5.1001. Okay, that's probably as good as I'm gonna get. I'll let it sit for a second. And uh, that kind of precisely does the voltage and the it's good. The recapping actually did help on this power supply a lot. I, I, this was the right thing to do. Next, I looked at, I took apart all of this, which was a lot. There's a ton of screws and reseated all these cards um, and double checked everything. There was, there was nothing wrong with this. I, I also did look at the uh, analog board, which is attached to the bottom and checked the capacitors there, but it was all fine. Um, so I was suspecting the CPU board. So the CPU board is underneath these and there's many cards going on here. The, and a ribbon cable, you can see the multicolored cable between them. The one that ended up being a pro, like started working when I disconnected it was the memory card uh, board that you connect in. And this U4 uh, IC is, is the particular problem, but you can see it's connected here and down onto the main board and then on this upper board there's lots of, uh, lots of boards going on here. Take that board out and uh, you know you, you unscrew it there and flip it over. You see this, and if you look at the the, the trick is U4. There's that little black dot, um, which looks like the chip overheated. If I pull off the thing, it's overheated some more. There it is with all of it off. Um, I don't know what this chip is or what it does. Um, couldn't figure out a replacement, um, but I ended up just putting the board back in and disconnecting it from the unit. I don't need this board, and <clears throat> the unit seems to work fine without it. I replaced a very loud pan flow uh, fan with a uh, Noctra, uh, which is totally silent, seems to work as well, and you can see that's installed, um, and the, that thing is going to the trash. Here's me um, trying to calibrate. You can see I go through the steps, but um, for those that know what's going on here, uh, it's clearly not going to work because I don't have the calibration output connected to the input. Ugh. All right, so with the cable connected, I'm going to go really fast here uh, because this calibration takes a while, but I did want to record all of it for the uh, 8591A. Um, the trick is once it's done, uh, you'll see me, I have to push uh, Cal again and then uh, say store. Um, that will actually save it in the, the thing. Oh, I should also mention, because uh, I didn't, uh, that I did replace the battery with a new battery. Um, so I desoldered the battery that was in there and soldered a new one in. That's uh, pretty straightforward. There's, there's tons of videos showing how to do that and the manual is quite good for that. Um, so I'll let this run and uh, we'll pick it up at the end of the calibration.
All right, so I have our Roden Schwartz SMT03 signal generator, and what I'm doing here is I'm sweeping minus 30 dB across the entire range of this um, the this HP spectrum analyzer. So you see the thing swing and go back uh, to just test it out, and it seems to be uh, reasonably consistent. I think the Roden Schwartz is a pretty high quality signal, so I'm pretty happy that this is behaving the way we expect. Um, just sort of sweeping through the entire range over time. Um, I did look at like AM and FM modulation on the, uh, the HP and it looked uh, perfectly fine. All right, one last bit of fun. Let's look at the Cal output. Um, so I've got this into my um, Rigol, which is the only scope I have. My analog ones are not fast enough. This is a 300 megahertz, as you can see, a 300 megabit hertz sine wave. Uh, going into this so we're just taking a look at that um, and I do have a teeny SA ultra so I wanted to hook that up to the teeny SA it should be fun one-handed to try and uh, get this coax on there we go all right so we can see uh, this is at uh, 500 kilohertz span um, centered around 300 megahertz so we can see on the uh, Teeny SA Ultra that we we see it and it's at uh, minus 21.2 dB on this so what we're seeing that's a little off I think should be minus 30 um, and in fact on the HP which is set up exactly the same centered around under it's got uh, the the uh, 500 kilohertz and um, I just hit it again but it didn't change it you can see the thing it also updates a bit quicker so I go to 1 megahertz on the span and then I just did a uh, preset just to see the entire signal again and this is just the calibration signal and the thing is working thanks um, hope this helps uh, someone fix theirs if they run into the same problem